Kennedy. Part of the enduring fascination with the short presidency of John F. Kennedy was in the unprecedented glamour he brought to the office, which was amplified tremendously by how much of it happened in the new world of television, including his violent death on November 22, 1963. But this was the moment that launched a thousand conspiracy theories. Lee Harvey Oswald, who was arrested for the murder after the FBI and witnesses linked him to the evidence, was shot to death before he could tell his whole story. Among the documents released today, this memo from the FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover, written only hours after Oswald died in a Dallas hospital. It begins sarcastically. There is nothing further on the Oswald case except that he's dead, writes Hoover. He goes on to blame the Dallas police who, despite his warnings that they be extra protective of Oswald, had carelessly led Oswald directly into the range of Jack Ruby's handgun. Then, as if foreseeing the troubles ahead, Hoover writes, The thing I am concerned about, and so is Mr. Katzenbach, the deputy attorney general at the time, is having something issued so we can convince the public that Oswald is the real assassin. The desire to reach a quick conclusion about the assassination at a time when the public wasn't sure whether it was the first shot in a war with Cuba or even a nuclear war with Russia was something that understandably preoccupied the new president, Lyndon Johnson. But it would also be a reason that for more than half a century, many would doubt that the official explanation of the crime offered by the Warren Commission could be trusted. None of the documents released last night is likely to clear up those doubts. At best, they'll confirm what has already been reported over the years. The most interesting documents that we've been looking for, these sort of super secret documents that nobody's ever seen a word of before, most of them are still secret today. We may not see them until April and maybe not even then. Philip Shannon's book, A Cruel and Shocking Act, independently uncovered much of the material that we're seeing now. It raises questions but leaves little doubt about the big one. Oswald was the killer and he acted alone. Keith Bogue, CBC News, Washington.